2011 in the seniors division and then a couple of years later in masters ended up becoming the world champion so yeah. it's a shame that now he's focused on <laughs> arguably one of the greatest pokemon players of all time but here we are team preview between jamie boyd and nils dunlop nils running tapu koko persian in its alolan form snorlax arcanine nihiligo and mimikyu Jamie on the left with Pheromosa, Porygon Z, Smeargle, Snorlax, Zergatry, and Tapu Lele. There's that Smeargle and Porygon Z that had some success in the international championships. Yeah, it's such an annoying team to see uh, because you have, you know, multiple setup potential that Zergatry could have Tail Glow, the Porygon Z could have uh, the Z conversion, Snorlax could have either Curse or Belly Drum. Uh, Smeargle, of course, supports that very well. And then you have Tapu Lele and Formosa, both very fast, very powerful Pokemon. So you really have to lead carefully against those six Pokemon from Jamie. And then on Nil's side, he's definitely got a Trick Room mode. You see Mimikyu most likely is going to have Trick Room, maybe a Psych Up. Neil Ego also, you know, you will see it carry Trick Room a decent number of times. Uh, and then you even have some support, the Intimidate from Arcanine, the Fake Out from Persian, Parting Shot from Persian. All of that ends up helping the Snorlax set up and seeing how much support is given to this Snorlax, you have to imagine it might be a belly drum set. Yeah, uh, that is one of the more popular sets. Uh, Nils actually in the international championships used a Scarf Knight Lego, you know, one of those variants that we saw yesterday uh, towards the later half of the day as both players extend their hands for the handshake. Great sportsmanship exhibited by both players. Uh, yeah. He used that, you know, the Acid Spray combo to start hitting things with very powerful electric type attacks with that Tapu Koko. So I wonder if he's changed it up, maybe trying to fake some people out just like that Persian that he has. <laughs> uh, so we'll just have to watch how this plays out between these two amazing players from Europe. Here we go. Smeargle and Tapu Lele are the leads that Jamie decides to go with, while Nils on the other side leading with Mimikyu and Tapu Koko. The Electric Surge is going to go ahead and activate signifying that that Tapu Koko is going to be much, much faster than that Tapu Lele. Now bringing out its Psychic Surge, it is actually going to be a Psychic Seed Tapu Lele. Wow. So that's going to go ahead and make it a bit harder to knock out from that Tapu Koko. Yeah, very interesting though. Mimikyu is one of those Pokemon that can be trained to outspeed Tapu Lele and pick up the one-hit KO if it has something like a Ghost DMZ. Um, but Smeargle, of course, can easily just follow me and redirect any attacks. It has a number of support options. Tapu Koko, though, will be faster than both. Uh, the electric terrain isn't up, so I mean it's going to deal negligible damage to Tapu Lele. Uh, Smeargle also can put Pokemon to sleep if it wants since electric terrain isn't up. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see how this turn plays out, but I have to like Jamie's position here. Yeah, a lot of players, they actually use Smeargle for fake out support, but you know, seeing that he led it with the Tapu Lele, I believe that maybe the Smeargle doesn't have to rely on fake out support in order for it to function properly. Yeah, it's not going to go for a fake out this turn. Who knows if it even has fake out considering he's got the Tapu Lele. Tapu Koko now going for a Volt Switch hitting in that Smeargle slot. Now Tapu Koko going to retreat back to Nils' bench and Nils can react. No switch has happened, so maybe now Nils is just trying to find better board position against the Smeargle and this Tapu Lele. Yeah, he absolutely wants to because, you know, Tapu Koko is not in a good spot there and he's going to want to get the electric terrain back up later in the game. Yep, and now the top of Lele goes for a Psychic. Gonna hit that Snorlax doing about 40%. Smeargle, of course, thanks to the Psychic terrain, is gonna be able to go for a Spore and put that Mimikyu to sleep. Mimikyu will not be able to move just yet, but it does take its first turn of sleep. Yep, which is good, so it's gonna have a chance to wake up, but here's Moody. Nope, an Accuracy boost. Uh, not gonna matter too much now that Dark Void is no longer in the format and a special defense drop, but Smeargle is at such low health, it's not gonna matter. Yeah, not a very uh, relevant moody boost or drop that turn, but you see exactly why uh, you do want to retreat the Tapu Koko to bring in later because, you know, the Psychic Terrain right now, it's not only powering up Tapu Lele's attacks, but it's also allowing Smeargle to put Pokemon to sleep. So Tapu Koko coming in uh, potentially this next turn or even in a future turn, allowing Snorlax to take less damage from Psychic and not be at risk of getting put to sleep. Certainly an option for Nils. All right, moving now into the next turn. Tapu Lele is going to retreat, coming back, and Jamie is going to replace it with his own Snorlax here. Uh, really strong matchup here between two Snorlaxes, Battle of the Titans. Uh, Tapu Koko is going to replace the Sleeping Mimikyu after it has already taken its first turn of sleep and you know try to prevent uh, more Pokemon from being put to sleep thanks to that Electric Train. And it does. Great call right there from Nils to you know kind of electrify the battlefield, wake everything up. Uh, and Snorlax now on Nils' side goes for a return and hits, oh sorry, a frustration into the Snorlax over there as the Moody Boosts are going to be irrelevant on Jamie's Smeargle. Yeah, but Tapu Koko's uh, going to be faster than Smeargle and able to pick up the knockout. 
Uh, Snorlaxes are both facing off against each other, so it's going to depend entirely on what the speed of each is, and as well as what their setup move of choice is. Uh, but right now, Tapu Koko is in a good spot, considering it has its terrain up. We saw it block that Spore, uh, which is key, but it looks like Jamie switched out that Tapu Lele. You know, you get rid of the special defense boost, but it allows you to get your psychic terrain up later. Yeah, and that might be important later on. We always talk about those terrain wars. Tapu Koko now uh, using Volt Switch here, going to hit that Smeargle and pick up the KO. So Nils removing a pretty big threat. You know, Smeargle, you never want to have your entire team put to sleep. Yeah, that's a and great turn, too, because yeah. it lets him put Tapu Koko back in the... Uh, Put it in the back so that should Tapu Lele come in, you can reset terrain again. Yep, and uh, Night League is going to replace the Tapu Koko as Nils is Snorlax, finding this turn to use its Belly Drum attack and maximize its attack stat at the cost of half of its hit points. Of course, that combo, that combo is really well with the Gluttony ability. As Snorlax oh. goes for a high horsepower, oh, goes for a high horsepower, hits that Night League and picks up the KO. So right there, Nils forces switch in that Night League, but unfortunately, uh, Pays the price. Yeah, but he does get his Snorlax set up with the Belly Drum, and we saw that his Snorlax was either faster or won a speed tie, so that is going to be good in the Snorlax Mirror match. But unfortunately, you lose that Neolego so fast. You know, it didn't have a Focus Sash there, so that does kind of give you a hint on its item. It is either the 50% Healing Berry uh, going for a full Trick Room set, or it's a Choice Scarf set. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it is kind of scary now staring down the fully powered Snorlax on the other side because you had to figure out a way to deal with it before it can do too much damage to your side of the field. The sleeping Mimikyu now oh. comes up. Oh, that's a pretty good counter. That's that is a pretty a good great counter. answer to that Snorlax. Yep, so now uh, the Pheromosa hits the field for Jamie. That is going to be threatening that Snorlax very well. One of the downsides to that Belly Drum variant, it doesn't get any sort of defense boosts. Unless you use Stockpile. Yeah, we do see that sometimes where Snorlaxes do opt for both Stockpile and Belly Drum, but usually not too common. What'll be interesting to see if the Snorlax has Protect in order to, you know, keep it safe another turn. Hope Mimikyu wakes up and is able to get an attack off. And, you know, if Formosa even has high jump kick, and there Ooh, is the Protect. Snorlax using Protect here. Gonna try to protect itself as Pheromosa goes for oh, a high that jump could kick. Be but, big. Yep, that's 50% of its health done right now because it does not make contact with anything. Oh. As Mimikyu continues to stay asleep, Snorlax now is gonna be able to move on Jamie's side, and that's just gonna go for a belly drum as well. So here we are with two Snorlaxes, uh, powerhouses of this format now set up with belly drums as Snorlax goes ahead and munches away on its berry to heal back 50% in a pinch. But thanks to that gluttony ability, well, Snorlax might get a little hungry just a little bit sooner. Yeah, Nils really needed. Mimikyu to wake up that turn to be able to pick up the knockout on Formosa because right now is Snorlax, you know, even though it got the belly drum off, it's getting threatened right now by the Formosa and it doesn't matter if Jamie Snorlax had the belly drum up as well as long as that Formosa was gone, then Nil Snorlax would be able to pick up the knockout onto Jamie Snorlax before it could even move, but unfortunately, Mimikyu's still asleep. Mimikyu cannot move right there using a plus priority attack since it tried to sleep there earlier. Uh, Formosa goes for a poison jab hitting that Mimikyu and gonna go ahead and bust that disguise. Uh, possibly setting up for a KO next turn. Uh, Fairmosa does reveal that it is the Life Orb uh, variant, and now Snorlax on Nils' side goes for a frustration, hits that Snorlax on Jamie's side and picks up the KO easily. Uh, that Snorlax kept moving before Jamie's, which may signify that Nils' Snorlax might be slightly faster. A lot of players are you know, varying how they train their Snorlaxes in speed. Yeah, especially in significant uh, moments like the Snorlax Mirror Match. As we saw right there, it's important uh, if your Snorlax is faster than the other one. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, Formosa decided not to target the Snorlax, kind of ignoring it, uh, even though it had just protected the turn before, instead choosing to bust the disguise of Mimikyu. Perhaps it's because uh, Mimikyu would be really strong against the Tapu Lele in the back, uh, but you know, you're staring down two big threats. It's, you know, it's tough. Yeah, and you know, one thing that Mimikyu's can do, they can go for Z Destiny Bonds, which uh, kind of give it a follow me effect, maybe worried that Mimikyu could wake up and go for that maneuver. Tapu Koko is going to replace the Snorlax here, going to sacrifice those, that Belly Drum boost, going to change the terrain instead, and kind of take away from the amount of damage that this Tapu Lele can do. Mimikyu does wake up, goes for a Shadow Sink here, could possibly get a KO on Feromosa because of its Feral Defenses, and Feromosa does get knocked out. And it looks like Jamie now down his last legs here. 
Uh, Jamie's Tapu Lele goes for a Psychic, and again, even with that Psychic Terrain, that was not going to KO uh, that Mimikyu at all. Yeah, that was not a whole lot of damage done to Mimikyu, less than half, but a great play bringing Tapu Koko in there. You knew Mimikyu was going to wake up that turn, and Shadow Sneak would easily take out half of uh, Formosa's remaining HP because of just how frail it is. So, great play there by Nils, and he's going to take game number one. Yeah, and now, yep. Jamie just forfeits it and decides to move on to the next game. Uh, save some time for later on, just in case. I think Jamie has all the information that he needed or that maybe he could have gone out of the uh, team on Nils' side anyway. So now moving into game two, Jamie is, uh, you know, he needs to win two more to make it to the top cut. And Nils is just one game away from making it to the top cut. Yep, so uh, for adjustments, I'm not sure if Nils needs to make a whole lot of adjustments. I mean... His team played very straightforwardly. He played great. I mean, even though he lost his Neo Lego so easily, it ended up not mattering at all. So uh, if I'm Nils, I feel very confident in what I did last game, and I'm just going to continue to do that until Jamie proves that you know, he's able to take down my, you know, my Snorlax and all of the support I have for it. Uh, but if I'm Jamie, I definitely look to make a little bit of an, an adjustment or at least play a little bit differently, knowing how important that Tapu Koko is. Not only is it allowing Mimikyu to get Shadow Sneaks off uh, when you feel that you're safe because you have the Psychic Terrain up, or you feel that your Smeargle can go for a Spore safely because you have Psychic Terrain up, you know, suddenly Tapu Koko comes in and then you're able to Shadow Sneak, you're protected from falling asleep. Uh, so I think if I'm Jamie, I'm just looking to manage the terrains a little bit differently this game. Uh, but otherwise, you know, he's definitely got the power on his team to succeed that Formosa. We saw just how big of a threat it is. You know that the opposing Snorlax now has Protect, so you can manage when to go for the high jump kick a little bit better. Uh, but other than that, you know, Jamie's definitely got the type of team that's able to Know, defeat Nils' team if he's able to not only lead correctly, but play correctly throughout the match. Yeah, I'd also like to go back and correct myself. Uh, Top of Goku coming in in the previous game, you know, took away the Psychic Terrain, allowed Mimikyu to uh, go for that Shadow Sink. So, yeah, thank you for catching that, Ray. I appreciate your orthodoxy <laughs> up here. <laughs> you know, in the in the heat of the action, a lot of things can get by you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Even some players, even in, while they're playing important matches, can sometimes forget Lightning Rod or even Terrains. But, uh, you know, Nils, he's proven why he's done so well you know he thinks about every single option he thinks about every single move he thinks about every single outcome yeah absolutely all right now getting ready to jump into game two between these two players from europe to the best players from europe both these players actually got uh free trips into day two i believe didn't have to go through the gauntlet of going through day one so uh here they are proving their worth and you can actually see the cottony uh charm that that jamie has so you know cottony is a pokemon that holds a special place in his heart because it won him a regional <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go top of coco gonna go ahead and be sent out along with meme q gonna activate the electric terrain Feramosa and snorlax are the leads that jamie decides to go with changing it up completely in terms of the leads here on Jamie's side. Yeah, which is really interesting because Formosa is going to threaten this Tapu Koko and it is going to move before it. However, Mimikyu, we know, is going to also threaten the Formosa. So, you know, it's a tough decision here for Jamie. What he wants to do, does he want to go after the Tapu Koko or does he want to conserve his Formosa more against the Mimikyu? Uh, there's no way Mimikyu goes for a Trick Room knowing that Jamie's Snorlax is going to outspeed Nil's Snorlax under Trick Room. So I doubt this Mimikyu goes for a Trick Room, even staring down the Formosa. However, you know, targeting that Formosa slot with something like a Play Rough would, you know, do a lot of damage to it and kind of protect the Tapu Koko if you want to keep Tapu Koko in this turn. Feramosa now protecting itself, not wanting to possibly get uh, a lot of damage dealt to it with a possible Shadow Snake or even a uh, physical attack like that Play Rough right there into that Feramosa Protect. So great Protect right there. Snorlax just going straight up for that Belly Drum. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, that's going to get Snorlax set up instantly. And right now it's not really feel fearing a whole lot of damage, especially from the Mimikyu. Tapu Koko, though, can definitely deal some damage under the electric terrain, but Jamie's probably got his Tapu Lele in the back to reduce the damage done to his Snorlax. So if he does have that in the back, you have to imagine Formosa will switch out for the Tapu Lele. And Snorlax right now, I mean, the only thing you're scared of if you're Jamie is if that Mimikyu has something like a Psych Up. Yeah, that is something that is possible. A lot of these Mimikyus do, uh, you know, since Nils' Snorlax on the other side does also have Bailey Drum, you know, it's yeah, not yeah, it's uncommon to see Mimikyus uh, just try to copy those boosts, and that is something that you have to worry about. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out. Uh, it Does Nils have Psych Up, and is he going to go for it? Porygon Z is going to be a Pokemon that switches in. Not exactly the duo that you expect to see, Porygon Z with Snorlax. Nihiligo is going to replace the Tapu Koko, which uh, kind of happened last time, and that didn't 
do well as Mimikyu oh, does go for a second here. Uh, this is this is slightly dangerous here. As Norox goes for a frustration fr frustration hitting that Nihiligo and easily picks up the KO, but now this Mimikyu is all set up. So boy, this is gonna be interesting considering that Mimikyu is actually moving pretty fast. Yeah, Neo Lego again does absolutely nothing for <laughs> Nils. Uh, just gets switched in and KO'd instantly. Um, you know, he didn't want to go for the Volt Switch there because he was fearing Formosa just staying in and going for an attack. So rather than Volt Switch out to get a little bit of damage onto Snorlax while switching at the same time, decides to just switch in the Neo Lego as a sacrifice. Unfortunately, it buys him a little bit of time to get the Psych up onto Mimikyu, but that's about it because he traded Neo Lego for that. So let's see if Mimikyu can pull this off. And here comes a Gigavolt Havoc, it looks like, coming from Nils's Tapu Koko. This is going to be targeting down a Pokemon over on Jamie's side. It will be doing a good amount of damage considering it's in the electric terrain. Here it is, the Gigavolt Havoc going to go ahead and target down the Porygon Z. That's going to do massive damage. I don't think Porygon Z can even hang on as that is an easy one-hit KO. Porygon Z really just switching in and not doing much else as Mimikyu goes for a play rough. In that Snorlax, plus six. Snorlax cannot even hang on, so Nils' team is slightly picking apart Jamie's team here. Yeah, and Mimikyu still has its disguise intact. It's going to be extremely difficult for Jamie to deal with that at this point, especially since Nils still has a Pokemon in the back. Yep, and here comes the Faramosa and the Tapu Lele. One of the best things about this is that that Tapu Lele's, uh, that Tapu Lele's terrain is going to take effect. And of course, now Mimikyu can't try to pick up the KO with a Shadow Sneak, which is nice. Yeah, it is good. Mimikyu is going to be unable to go for the Shadow Sneak right here. Um, so I think... It depends how the Mimikyu is trained compared to Tapu Lele, because if Formosa decides to double target Mimikyu and then have Tapu Lele go for a Psychic into that slot, it'll deal a lot of damage to Mimikyu, but based on the damage from last match, we saw it won't KO. Uh, so if I'm Nils, I think I just attack with both. If you ignore Mimikyu, uh, if you're Jamie, then it just sweeps the rest of your team, so you have to target the Mimikyu. Um, so that just leaves Tapu Koko open to just go for a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, so I think if I'm Nils, I just attack with both right here. Yep, and oh boy, Nils' meme Q is, of course, uh, it's not put to sleep, it's putting in so much more work. Of course, Tapu Koko going to switch out, uh, going to come into Snorlax, and of course, now that terrain can be swapped. Faramosa using Poison Jab here, going to go ahead and bust meme Q's disguise, but meme Q now gets to go for a very powerful attack, either into that uh, Faramosa or the Tapu Lele. And we don't know. We know there's no focus ash anywhere. Here comes a psychic from that Tapu Lele. Uh, gonna need a critical hit to get the KO, but no, it is not a critical hit. And Mimikyu connects on that play rough and picks up the KO on that Faramosa. So it's gonna be this Tapu Lele versus Snorlax and Mimikyu, and of course, you know, Tapu Koko. Yep. So Nils should still end up picking up this victory here with three against one. Uh, especially now that he's gonna be able to shadow sneak Tapu Lele, but that was risky. I mean. I feel like if he just kept Tapu Koko into Dazzling Gleam and had Mimikyu go for a play rough onto something like Tapu Lele, I mean, then you kind of guarantee yourself the win, but uh, you put yourself at risk to something small chance, like a critical hit. Doesn't happen, so you end up winning anyway. Uh, yep. So very well played there by Nils. And here comes a maximize attack Shadow Sneak from that Mimikyu on that Tapu Lele. Picks up the KO after Tapu Koko comes in, and that does it. Congratulations, Nils Dunlop. You are one of the first players to move on to the top cut here of the 2017 Pokemon Video Game World Championships. Well done, and you're back. <laughs> yep, he's going to be back.